Well, first things first, I want to lay any of your thoughts at rest of thinking, well, Father Christian did it again. He messed up, read something that's not in our bulletin. Well, it's true, but actually I did it on purpose. I read the response of Mary, which follows the portion that we do have printed in our bulletin, the portion which is called traditionally the Magnificat, coming from the Latin, which means glorifies. And our Revised Common Lectionary allows for it to be read along with the portion that is in your printed bulletin. I just didn't know I wanted to use it until two days ago. So, for the last number of weeks, we have been singing great Advent hymns, many of which which speak to the hope and redemption of Israel by the long-awaited Messiah. And soon, we'll be singing those great Christmas hymns, many of which speak to the Christmas story. But the Magnificat is different because it's a biblical hymn. Not that the hymns in our hymnal are not biblical because they are filled with much biblical and doctrinal truths. But the Magnificat speaks to the incarnation like no other written hymn can. C.S. Lewis referred to it as, quote, unquote, a terrible song. Coming from the Latin terribilis, meaning dreadful, frightful, and fearsome, which could very well have been what Mary was feeling at this time in her life. Who wouldn't be a bit fearful when an angel had come to you and said, you're going to bear a child, right? And he's going to be the savior of this world. But the mag is also a song of faithfulness, of trust, of obedience, and blessing. Mary had just made the long journey into the Judean countryside, some 50 miles away. So think about from church, east on 75 towards Big Cypress National Preserve, somewhere halfway between us and Fort Lauderdale, 50 miles. But she did it traveling pregnant, some by foot, maybe some on a donkey. Why might you ask she might do this? To find some encouragement, some support from her older and wiser and also pregnant cousin. And when they greet, something spooky happens. Elizabeth's babe, John, who would be later known for eating bugs, wearing that roadkill, also baptizing Jesus, the baby leapt, and she was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit, and then pronounces words of prophetic blessing on Mary, saying, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Magnificat is what follows the spirit-filled prophetic word from Mary's cousin. Fearful, frightened, dreadful possibly, I tend not to disagree with C.S. Lewis, but when I read the mag, it builds up in me feelings of faithfulness, of obedience, peace, and blessing. But maybe that's the point of C.S. Lewis. For Scripture says... Perfect love casts out fear. So in our gospel lesson, including the Magnificat, which I added in, the word blessed is found four times. It is with Elizabeth's prophetic words that Mary is given the timeless title of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, blessings in today's terms seems to be more about what you have. You're blessed if you have stuff, along with a sweet ride, a fat paycheck, a well-toned bod. A recent example of this would be in our, one of our Christmas movies, this, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Now, the Grinch thought that if only he would deprive the town of Whoville and all the little Whos of all their Christmas presents, all of their stuff, the roast beast for Christmas dinner, the Who hash decorations, that he would prevent Christmas from coming and he would rob them of all their joy and feelings of being blessed at Christmas. Likewise, Ebenezer Scrooge, in The Christmas Carol, believed that he was living the life he truly wanted and wanted to lead being blessed with all that he had earned, scrounged, and secured for himself. But we know the movies. Both of these characters believed, as many of us do today, that blessings, true blessedness, comes from what we have and accumulated in life. But both found out that it's not about the stuff. After being touched from the inside out with love, 
and they came to realize that what it means to be blessed and how to bless others is much more than the things that we have. Now, while these holiday stories are not, are, are not inherently Christian, they illustrate profoundly that Christmas is a matter of the heart and soul, and that being blessed that we could bless others comes from something outside of ourselves. Now, in terms of secular culture and popular media, media like the ABC family, they would suggest that this something outside of ourselves is like the spirit of Christmas and decorating trees and lights and Christmas cheer and Yule logs, all of which is very fun. But we know the far greater truth as believers that that, that, that something else external to us is far greater than any of those things around us in the Christmas season, being God himself. I guess that's why you see on the cars those magnets of put Christ back in Christmas. Now, if you'll indulge me one more, one more Christmas movie, and I'll move on, but um, because uh, it, it, it really comes more to the Christmas, the truth of Christmas. The, the classic, It's a Wonderful Life. We all know the movie, I think, with uh, George Bailey. But it took the intervention of God himself, sending an angel to George to minister to him, to assist him when he had lost his way. And it's through the intervention of God that George's heart was touched and his eyes were opened, that he would know how blessed he really was and who it was that had blessed him. So now you all know my favorite Christmas movies. But nothing hits the point home more than the original Christmas story. In Mary's case, the mother of Jesus. And it's not about stuff at all for Mary. Mary's blessedness comes out of her cooperation with the mighty work of God in and through her life. That which came to her via the Holy Spirit and God Almighty and Christ himself. Mary is pronounced as blessed because, number one, of her faith and obedience in God taking God at his word and faithfully taking up the call in her life. Number two, Mary was pronounced blessed because being full of grace, she bore the Christ child, becoming what the early church father Origen deemed the Theotokos, or the God-bearer. Mary's being blessed had nothing to do with who she was or where she was from or what she had herself or to offer anyone else. The cosmic events that left Mary pregnant also made her aware of what God was up to and how he operates. For one thing, Mary is aware of her humble status in her time and culture as she sings out saying, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Mary didn't belong to a famous family, hadn't grown up in a big city, and had absolutely no prospects whatsoever to make a mark in the world or to be ever remembered beyond the next generation or so. She had nothing and was civically seen as nothing. Yet Mary stood before Elizabeth, and she was counted among those who were mightily blessed. Not because of who she was, but because of her faith in God and her obedience to the word and taking up the task of being a bearer of God. Obedience, it has been said, is joining God in what he is already doing and doing what he says to do. Mary was obedient because of her great faith and courageous actions, and she is blessed. And she has even claimed herself of being blessed, has been called blessed for generations. Brothers and sisters, many of us would say that any day of the week, we are blessed. Just look what we have. We have material possession. We have food. We have water. We have shelter. We have much more. Yes, we are surrounded with abundance. But for Mary, her being blessed is much greater. It involves the Holy One, as she knows the love of the Father and the bond of an intimate relationship with God and His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And so it's very fitting that we read this pericope from Luke on this fourth Sunday in Advent, or Saturday night, as we lit the candle of love, the fourth candle on our Advent wreath. Because we have, we have so much, but it is the knowing 
and our inmost self of the love of God, which makes the difference, which makes us truly blessed. If nothing is going right, if we're sick, if we're hurting, if we're in trouble, if we're having a blue Christmas, if everything we had was taken from us, but we know in and through it all that God loves us, and we are his and he is ours, we are blessed. All you got to do is make some time to stop and bask in the love of Jesus today. And you will know that you are blessed in powerful ways that have nothing to do with stuff. This divine love, says Bernard of Clairvaux, so penetrated and filled the soul of Mary that no part of her was left untouched. So that she loved with her whole heart, with her whole soul, and her whole strength, and was full of grace. In my studies this week, I came across a scientific phenomenon called quantum entanglement. Maybe you've heard of it. This is the phenomenon that if you took two particles of energy, kept them in close proximity to each other for a long, long time, they form a relationship, a bond that is shown to defy the imagination. The connection between these two particles is so strong that if you took one particle to a laboratory in L.A. and removed the other one to a lab in New York City, whatever you do to one particle in L.A. will instantly happen to the particle in New York as well. Einstein called it spooky. It also defied his theory that nothing can travel faster than light. Somehow, however, once these particles form this kind of bond, it cannot be severed no matter how great the distance between the two becomes. This is the magnitude, the power, the love, the blessing that encompasses the first Christmas and all of life after it. The intimacy, the closeness of being skin to skin with Jesus, the Son of God, created a bond closer than a quantum entanglement with Mary with Joseph, with all who knew and walked with Jesus. And Mary is the model for all of us who believe. Mary was blessed by hearing, by by bearing the Christ child, by yielding to the power of the Holy Spirit and walking in faithfulness and obedience. We are blessed the moment Jesus Christ came into this world and equally blessed as we invite him into all the aspects of our life becoming bearers of Christ ourselves. When we are faithful and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, making time to be skin to skin close with Jesus, things begin to happen. Divine encounters, miracles, healings, answered prayer. And we are blessed and we are used in mighty ways to be a blessing to others, to the effect that some might call it spooky. As Christmas draws near, I commend the Magnificat to you. It's in our book account prayer within the daily office. Look at it, open it up, read it for yourself. Because it speaks of the rejoicing of our souls when the Lord comes upon us. It speaks of the great and mighty acts the Lord has done for us. It speaks of the mercy of God who exalted the lowly and filled the hungry with good things. And it speaks of the fulfillment of the promises given to Abraham and his seed forever. So as we finish this season of hope and preparation, of joy, of love, and head into the glory of Christmas, know that you are blessed and be a blessing to others. Amen.